it's your boy, Angelon Wallace. Welcome back to my channel. If you have it by now, please hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this for sure. I make videos about traveling, entrepreneurship, and recruitment, if you guys do not know by now. So today we're going to be talking about being Black in Argentina, okay? You know, let's address the elephant in the room. Does racism exist here? <laughs> we need to jump straight into it. All right, so I've been in Argentina for a few weeks now, um, and I'm just still getting adjusted to everything. It's been a little rocky since I've been here. I definitely get a lot of stares, you know? It is not that many Black people here. Often, I'm usually the only Black person on the street or in the store, so, you know? And I already was preparing myself for that. Of course, you guys know it's a lot of history here. This is where most of the Nazis came and escaped, and, you know, so it's a lot of history here. For the most part, you know, I do get a lot of stares. And, you know, but it's interesting to discuss, you know, the topic on if racism exists here in Argentina. So I came across a few other African-Americans or Africans from, you know, African-British or people from the UK, you know, and also African in generals. And I guess the way people, you know, address racism here is like, well, you know, once they hear you speak in English, or once they hear the accent, you're fine. And you know, cause, and I'm like, huh? And in Argentina, when you ask Argentini, Argentine, is does racism exist? They say no. And it's understandable why they say no is because they never experienced what racism is. So they are, they're blinded by what it actually is. You know what I mean? So here, even when I talk to other African-American males, it's like, oh man, you know, the chicks are gonna, the women, the women are gonna love you, but uh, you know, um, you know, the women are gonna love you, but you know, all they gotta do is hear that American accent or see that passport and you're good to go. And it's just like, huh? And it's like you need this credibility or you know, this certificate to be uh, you know, accepted into the culture here almost. And you know, and and that and people, I mean. You know, clearly explain it. You know, that is racism. You know what I mean? Like, if you are judging somebody by the color of their skin and you're waiting to hear if they have an accent or if they're American, you know, that is a form of racism because it's like, well, I don't talk to black people, but well, if they're American or if they have an English accent, then oh, they're they're powerful, they have money, they're rich, they have status, and this and that. So it is definitely a form of racism here. There are, but also a lot of Argentines, you know, a lot of my friends here, you know, I'd be walking around with some of, the, some of my friends here in Argentina that are from this country and they are, you know, they're not really aware how black people are aware when it comes to our surroundings. You know, as a black person, you know, we're always watching our back, we're watching our side, or we're 10 steps ahead. We know what the people behind us are wearing. We're always observant. And when you're traveling or walking or hanging with friends or people from here in Argentina, they're not observant like us, you know, in a sense. They're observant when it comes to like their phones and their purses getting snatched, but they're not observant up to their, their surroundings and just their, their safety and security, you know? I constantly get a lot of stares some stairs are curiosity. Some stairs are uncomfortable, like, you know, like very disgusting ticket stairs. And some are in shock as well, you know, because, you know, I do dress a little nicer here and I'm at these fancy stores or fancy malls sometimes. And they're like, you know, what is he doing here? You know, so it's, it's, it's you know, it's very white, you know, in a sense. I, you know, should black people travel to Argentina? Yes. I think black people should travel here because I think that is it helps educate the culture and the community more here and help people understand like, hey, you know, it's it's not only Africans on the streets, you know, selling glasses or shoes. There are black educated, you know, individuals all across the world and you know that live a, a well a wealthy and modest lifestyle and have a good life. You know, I think that more black people should come here to help educate the culture here when it comes to, you know, being black or being an African in a sense, you know. I, for the most part though, it's 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 it, it has its 
it has its good, it has its pros, and it has its cons, you know? I was telling somebody last night, I was like, well, Argentina is still behind in a lot of ways. They're behind when it comes to fashion, they're behind when it comes to technology, they're behind when it comes to the business structure, just the, everything is set up, but it's a poor country. And I was telling someone, you know, well, maybe it's not a bad thing this country is so behind. They was like, what do you mean? Well, I was like, well, in America, we're so materialistic. Everything is about status. Everything is about class. Everything is about, you know, the who's who's and, you know, what you're driving and what you're wearing. And here, everyone is on the same playing field. You know, everyone is trying to come up together. Everyone is struggling. So the human connection, you know, is more genuine. You know, I feel like the vibes are more sincere. It's in America, I, I struggle to, I struggle sometimes to understand who was my real friends and foes. You know, are these people my friends because of my status, because of my success? But in Argentina, it's genuine friendship. It's genuine, hey, I want to get to know you. I, you know, and I want to hang out with you and I, I want to know who you are. I don't really care about what you have. I don't care about what you wear. That doesn't mean anything to me because this is Argentina. And, you know, it's a beautiful thing in a sense, you know, to live in a, a country that's that's not so center or stuck up on the Kardashians or stuck up on, you know, all of these celebrities and trying to keep up with the Joneses, you know, and, and so, so, so it's a beautiful thing in a sense. Money is really, really, you know, um, cheap here as well. Money is really cheap. It's a lot of money in this country as well. You guys, I'm gonna probably make a separate video talking about money, but you know, you can go to Western Union to get double the rate, or you can go to the street. I'm probably gonna make a video as well, showing you guys like how to go get money. I may do like one Western Union money, but it's a lot of fucking money. Just to show you like some stacks of money real quick. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot, so <laughs> it's, you know, but I'm actually using this for dental work, so it's gonna be gone. Uh, and we're gonna make a separate video about that, you know, how cheap it is to get your dental work done here in Argentina. Um, so that's gonna be another cool video. Back to the topic, being black. So dating, <laughs> let's talk about dating as well as being black. So black men, like I said, are very, they stand out here. They are attractive, you know, we are very attractive here. I have seen a lot of success on a dating apps, Tinder, Buddy, Bumble, so many other apps, but it's very different. Dating is, um, it's confusing and it's scary as well because it's no clear direction on, you know, how to read a situation. You know, uh, when it comes to dating here, it's more, let's go with the vibe, let's do this. And then that person may go, 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 ghost for days. You don't even know what you did. Or, you know, they may just, you know, move on to the next person. It's like, ah, uh, we dated, we're not dating. And, you know, it's, it's, it's just very confusing. And, you know, um, and Argentinians agree, you know, how, bad the dating is here and you see a lot of the people here are beautiful especially Argentinian women are gorgeous they're really beautiful but they're single they're like single like at 50 60 70 like you know and here in Argentina it's just like ha huh, so so you know life goes on where in America we're always in a rush because it's like time is running out you know I'm getting old I don't want to die alone and here it's just like ah uh, you know I'm gonna work out and stay healthy if I meet someone cool if I don't don't so it's kind of hard sometimes as well to date to take you know, a serious dating, you know, like having a relationship here, it's kind of hard to take it serious, you know, in a sense. My experience has been a lot of, it's been a lot of ups, it's been a lot of downs. I do feel like I have been sexualized, um, of course, but we already had this discussion before. There are women who just sexualize me that want to date me, you know, and there are women who are, who are just, you know, really, really in love with black men. It's kind of, so, so, no, it's, it's like, it's kind of like, no, I'm not gonna talk to you, or I really like black American men, and you know, you're the one, you know, the one for me, you know? So it's interesting. I haven't been dating as much, but I had a few dates since I've been here. I've been working out five days a week, 
you know, just getting in shape and, you know, with my health and everything. But I am going to be making a lot more videos and hopefully want to bring on some Argentinian women to talk more about dating here uh, because it's, it's very different. One thing I can say is that the expectations are not that high for Argentinian men. You know, so, you know, I remember I asked one Argentinian woman, she was like, uh, Argentinian woman, she was like, uh, my only expectation is that the guy's not a drug addict. You know, that's that's it. They're like, oh, okay. So, I mean, like when I went on dates, I would show up with flowers and chocolates and some of the women would just be amazed, shot, uh, shocked. And my, my Argentine friend, he would say things like, bro, don't do that, that's too much. And I'm like, bro, you do you, you know what I mean? Like, you know, like, yeah, I, cause clearly whatever you do it, I guess it's working for you or it's not working for you. But the women here in Argentina don't really like dating Argentine men. It's very similar in Brazil, how a lot of Brazilian women didn't really like dating our Brazilian men. So, you know, shivery is, I think pretty dope. And I think, you know, I think a lot of Argentine women struggle with accepting how nice we are is scary because they're not used to it. And it's almost like, well, what does this person want? And it's like, well, this is how we were raised or this is the tradition. This is how things are, where I come from. And it's like, it's hard to like trust it almost. And if that makes sense, you know? So yeah, you know, um, the, the, but also, you know, I guess like, I feel like being black here you know, I remember so I saw someone make a YouTube video about it was hard for them to, to catch a taxi here. And, you know, I have not had that experience, but I would say or I do feel that probably black men have it easier in Argentina compared to black women. If that, you know, if that makes sense. And I feel like because, you know, sexism is so high in South American countries, a lot of black women are always stereotyped as prostitutes or hookers, sadly enough. Um, and I also believe that, you know, for me, I started dressing nicer because I was just like, man, that I just felt the judgment was so strong here. It was like, you know, people would stare like, when I first got here, I was like, they were like, oh man, this guy's, you know, an immigrant or homeless. And I'm like, you know, so I start buying much nicer clothes so people can, you know, separate the two. And it, I think it has made life more easy, but I had a racist situation when I went to um, Zara here in Palermo. And I went to Palermo like the first week, I lost all my clothes. That's another whole nother video. But I lost all my clothes at the airport, so I had to go shopping. I had like 15 pairs of clothes. I'm walking around the store, there's five guys in the store and nobody would help me. And I went to the manager and I asked to make a complaint, you know, and she was like, why? And I was like, you know, cause you know, these guys are racist, you know? And she's like, oh, sir, they don't speak English. And I'm like, hey, you don't need to speak English to, to, take, to say small, medium, large, you know? Like I've asked for help multiple times. You have not came to help me. You have not tried to offer to take my clothes. But with white women in the store or white men, they were running over to them, kissing her ass every day, you know? And you know, man, I, I, I walk with my head high and I, and I speak my mind, you know? So I think there was a use as well to a, a black person speaking with so much, you know, you know, just speaking their mind clearly, speaking freely as well. And they're not, Argentines don't like confrontation. They don't really like confrontation that much, you know what I mean? But they also don't like, you know, they never are called out. People don't complain here, you know what I mean? So that was a, it was a crazy, funny situation, you know? But one thing, you know, people still do speak Spanish here until you start speaking and they hear the English accent um, as well. I do feel that, you know, I mean, with the inflation, you know, money thing is a little crazy here. Salaries are really low. I mean, average people are making 30 to 50,000 pesos a month, which is equivalent to Brazil where people are making a thousand reels a month. So like 200 dollars. And, you know, so it's not much money to be made here, but the way people, it's scary because a lot of history about Argentina, okay? And I think it's a lot of history that I still myself need to do my research on, need to learn about, because it would help me understand the way and why people think the way they do, you know? There was a lot of history here, especially um, 
on the side of uh, how women were treated back in the day. And I feel that strongly has a lot to do with the dating culture here um, and why it's it's a little bit challenging because of how bad it was. And it's, I mean, Argentina just, you know, I think they just declared their in- independence in like, uh, was in like 1976. So that's not long ago at all, at all, you know? Um, the food is not the best. I don't like the food here. I'm not going to lie. I'm to keep it 100. I am on a diet now, so I have someone who makes my meals. I pay, um, I think, only um, 20 or $15 um, for the whole week. I get 10 meals and eggs. So all my meals are getting prepped. And I have a personal trainer right now that I'm paying uh, $5 an hour. Um, yeah, it's crazy. So a thousand pesos an hour. I meet with him five days a week. He's like a, a national co- co- competitor. So like here, even though it hasn't been the best, I'm like, man, maybe I didn't come here to, you know, to just have fun. Maybe I came here to focus on my health. And that's the beautiful thing about traveling and exploring because, uh, you know, I think we, we go to a lot of countries with the intentions of, dating, meeting people, you know, learning about the culture, learning about the history, hiking. And sometimes I believe the universe or God leads us in a very different direction. And that's why I encourage people who watch my channel to be willing to have an open mind, go with the flow and listen to the universe. You know, the universe wasn't, you know, in Brazil, I was living it up, you know, dinner, dating, having a good time, you know, doing a lot of things. And now I feel the universe is telling me in Argentina, we go make a, we go switch it up a little bit. We're going to make a little, a different direction. What I love about Argentina is that it's kind of like, um, you know, there's always a way around something, you know, like there's a lot of mis- confusion when it comes to the visa situations here, but I've done a lot of research and discovered that a lot of people here, you know, have found so many creative and different ways to stay here longer. And, and I'm going to make a lot of videos about that, about the visas and how I work here for you, for you all. Um, but also just with everything, I just feel like there's always a way out of the situation here. I was making a joke with an Argentine friend and I was like, ah oh, man, I don't want you to kill no one to go to jail. And they was like, well, not really. And I was like, well, I don't, you know, and I was like, huh? And it, I was like, well, not two people. She was like, well, two, three, four, not really, it's Argentina, you know, it's, and I was like, whoa, you know, like, it's very, you know, it's a lot around uh, the things here. I also read or saw that someone mentioned that um, they were here in Argentina and the police were uh, picking on a lot of black guys. I haven't had any issues with the police here at all. I walk past, I see about 20 cops a day. They're all downtown. And I, I haven't had any issues at all with the police here. Um, and they don't bother me, you know, like I said, but I do dress a little bit cleaner and a little bit nicer. But for the most part, I keep to myself. I think they're familiar with my face as well because, I, you know, my office is downtown now, but I haven't had any issues. Most people as well, if you know, live in Palermo. So Palermo is more of all the digital nomads, all the tourists live out there. So one thing I will say is that, you know, when it comes to racism or when it comes to treatment, it may be very different in Palermo compared to living in the inner city, okay? So I live like a little bit of both. You know, I switch between both because I like to go to Palermo sometimes to go out with friends, but Palermo is where all the bars, the clubs and cafes and restaurants are at. And I think most people would assume if you see a black person living in Palermo, they would assume that you are rich. Okay, because black people, there are no Africans in Palermo. So if they see some black people in Palermo, they would assume you're rich, they would assume you're American and you got a lot of money, okay? Now, if they see you downtown in the city, it could be a different story depending on what you're wearing. And sometimes it's nomads, we don't really care about what we're wearing or what we have on. So, you know, it, 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 it could be a lot of judgment, it could be a lot of, it could be a lot of faces and a lot of stuff around that as well, you know? 
Um, going back to the food, one of the reasons why I guess I didn't like the food is because they don't season the food a lot here. It's a very meaty, meaty, meaty culture. It's meat everywhere you go, okay? And Argentines love meat, you know? But there are a lot of vegetarian options here as well. But for the most part, there is a, you know, it's steak, it's meat, you know? What I love about Argentina as well, that as, as an entrepreneur and as someone who's traveling, it's kind of hard to go broke in this country. I mean, you're seeing, I'm seeing like Tennessee, vodka, five, dollars manny's and petties are 10 bucks um uh you could get a 90 minute massage for like uh for ten dollars and a a couple locations i mean it's it's really really cheap here and usually on average my haircuts are you know somewhat around the four or five bucks as well so it's not a it's not an arm and leg at all it's hard to really go broke here like i said especially like i said i you know i'm getting like 10 meals a week for my meal prepping, you know, just fifteen dollars. So if you're a nomad or you're somebody who's working remotely and you're making, even if you're making a thousand dollars a month, I think you still would do really good because you got to think the average person here in Argentina makes about fifty thousand pesos. So you know, uh, that's like you know two hundred dollars. So if you're making five x that, you know, you're bringing in what. Um, can't do the math right now, but a little, maybe three, four hundred thousand dollars a month. And a lot of prices, you have to think most of the prices in this country are centered around a lot of the, um, the, the local salaries. So people, you know, do price things affordable. Um, one thing I do do, um, is that, you know, before I like, I deleted like my WhatsApp picture and my name. So people don't know, see my face before I ask for their services. So sometimes when I'm asking for like a, you know, chiropractor or a massage, you know, people would try to run, a, you know, they would try to, they, they will try to take advantage of you if they know you're American off rip. I remember I had an emergency situation with a chiropractor out here and he came out of nowhere uh, with a ridiculous amount of money, you know, that he was charging me. And he was like, what portion of your, uh, you know, I was like, how much does it cost? He was like, what portion of, what, what, where, where are your back does it hurt? So I could tell you the price. What? What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean where? Like, <laughs> you telling me if the lower back is hurting, you go charge me $5,000. <laughs> you know? So it was, you know, so yeah, you know, if they find out you're American, like the first thing he said was, where are you from? And you know, when you see when you people like that, when you ask for services, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna get you. One thing I will say is the great thing about Argentina, you can always find somebody cheaper with everything everything clothes money uh you know um fashion chiropractor healthcare. there's always somebody cheaper in argentina so that's one thing i've learned to never just settle unless you're in an emergency but there's always somebody cheaper also taxis are pretty cheap here ubers are really cheap here you cannot use cars here okay this is a cash city you have to carry cash i hate it I hate it because I don't like carrying cash, but I have to adapt, you know, like I haven't carried cash in years, but everything is cash. Nobody, it's hard. Nobody catch, uses credit cards. And it's like almost a 21% surcharge on your credit card. On top of that, you're not getting double your money. So you can only get double your money as if you get it in pesos and cash. Like I said, you could do it through Western Union or you could go in the streets and exchange the blue dollars. So what people want, if you are coming to Argentina, make sure you have the blue $100 bills to exchange it on the streets for some dollars. And then you're good to go from there for the most part, okay? Um, I'm just trying to think about what else, you know, like uh, for the most part, it's been really easy to make friends. Um, you know, like um, I'm here working. It's a lot of nomad digital nomad meetups. It's a lot of Facebook uh, groups here. So I do feel like I do have a strong sense of community. It's not that many black people in Argentina. I know maybe uh, two or three that I can, you know, that I've met or seen out in public. And it's good, you know, because I give them the universal head nod and yo, what's up? You know what you're doing here? And it's, a, it's, it's good that we connect pretty easily and pretty fast on uh for the most part but i guess you know narrowing it down does racism racism is this in argentina yes i think racism is this in argentina but i don't think argentinas are aware that it is this if that makes sense 
okay so i don't think that they know that it is this. i don't think they know that their actions you know being the fact that they just they choose not to treat people a certain way based off the color of their skin and how they look unless they hear them with an english accent or find out they're american they treat them like a god you know what i mean and that's and that's racist to me you know i just feel to me it's racist Everyone else can, you know, you, you're all entitled to your opinion. Let me know your thoughts. You know, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. You're entitled to your opinion. But like I said, I'm not upset about it because uh, I'm not upset about it because I don't believe that they actually know that, you know, what it is. And I think that's why I'm encouraging more African-Americans to start traveling here more, because I think that, you know, this could be a great opportunity for us to educate the people here and, and open up their eyes to the world. I'm telling you, Argentina is still living in the 50s, guys, on every aspect, clothes, fashion, technology, housing. They're still living in the 50s. So I'm not offended and I'm not upset at all. I just know that it needs to be my job to start educating people. You will get called nigga too, a couple of times. People think it's cool. Like you're gonna have to educate some people. You're gonna go to a barbershop. What's up my nigga? What's up like this? What's up my nigga? You know, what you know? So they're gonna be saying the N word, you know, like you may get that, you know, they're not saying it with the R, but you will get it, you know, so. Just be mindful of that for sure as well. Look, guys, if you like the video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you want me to talk about. We're going to keep making more videos about being black, you know, in Argentina. We're going to talk about the culture. We're going to talk about dating. We're going to talk about housing. We're going to be talking about the visa process. And then hopefully I'll be headed to my next country. We'll go from there. All right. All right.